Hi, welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Power KPI. Now, the Power KPI is really a unique visual in that it allows you to see a KPI value, but across a trend line. So you can see it actually has in the screenshot here a multi line chart where you can look at multiple values at once across time. But you can also look at categorical data as well if you wanted to. So it doesn't necessarily have to be across time as it is here, but it usually makes sense to see a line chart over a trend across time. Now, there's a lot of customizations that you can make to this. In fact, the property windows that you'll see here in a few moments are pretty extensive as far as what you can do to customize the Power KPI. One of those values, one of those type values that you can customize is the indicator that you actually see up in the top right of the visual there. Where you see the little yellowed triangle that can be customized and changed to a lot of different visuals based on how you actually bring in your data. So your data can actually indicate what kind of value to show and it's uh, pretty simple to set up. There's just a lot of customization. So you'll see we'll probably spend a lot of time in the format paintbrush area in this demo to really get you a good idea of all the different customizations that are available to you. But you can do things like little triangles like you see here. You can do tick marks, check marks, flag. There's all kinds of different indicators you can put next to the KPI indicator. We'll also talk about the numbers that you see across the top and how you can uh, adjust those, change the title, change the subtitle play around with the legend area in the bottom. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of customizations to this visual. So let's get right into it, though, and show you where we can get started, how we can pull the Power BI KPI in, and then I'll show you in kind of an end-to-end -end demo of how you can use it. All right, so first things first, we're going to go pull in some data that we want to use for this example. Now, we're going to be looking at some budget versus actual data. So to do that, we're going to go up to the Get Data section here and connect to Excel. And the Excel file that I have here is one here called Budget vs. Actual KPI. And I'll select Open. Now, a couple things you'll see in this data set as it gets open here that I want to highlight and point out to you. This is a spreadsheet and the workbook called KPI Values. And inside here, you can, of course, see a date. Looks like it's at a monthly level. We have our actual value. We have last year's value. And we have whatever we budgeted for the current year. So what we budgeted for the current year compared to the actual. And then we'll also be able to put in a separate multi-line or a multiple line here for the prior year. You also can see the variance between the current year and budget, and you can see the uh, variance between the previous year and budget as well. Um, and then there's this last column in here that shows the indicator. This indicator is a value that you can pass in that allows you to determine what type of indicator do you want to show for that variance. So do I want to show a triangle, a circle, a check mark, a flag? You have the choice, but you need to map it to some kind of a number value here. And I'll show you how you would use that here in a few moments. All right, so we're going to go ahead and hit load to bring this now into the Power BI desktop. And this will load that data into the Power BI desktop. We should see a table appear here for, for us, and you do now. And then our next step is to go ahead and bring in the custom visual. Now, to do this, you'll go up to the top ribbon on the very top of the screen here, and you'll see custom visuals. And we'll select that we want to bring this in from the store. You can select from file as well if you've downloaded it from the store. But uh, the from store option allows us to actually bring it in directly from the store without necessarily having to download it separately. So you can, uh, if you want to, you can search here for Power KPI, and it should come back. You can see another one here that had the word KPI in it also brought back. But we're going to bring back the one here called Power KPI, and we'll select Add. And we should see that visual get entered into our visualizations pane here. You can see that here now. And I'll go ahead and select the Power KPI, bring that into the design service, and we'll make this take up a good chunk of the screen here. And then we'll start to bring in some of the different values that we want for this example. So for example, what I'd like to start by bringing in is the date. So I'll bring in the date value, and that's going to go underneath the axis section here. We're going to have our values for date going across the, the horizontal axes, and then our values for the actual going across the vertical. And really, it's whatever the value is that you, you check next. Whatever I bring in next is going to be placed underneath the vertical axes. So if I select actuals here next, you can see basically it's a typical line chart here, just to start off with at least, and the line chart's showing us the actual values that we have with, again, the dates going across the bottom and going vertically, the values that we're trying to visualize here. You can see it also has up top here a label section where you can see the, the date value that happens to be the last value shown, and you'll also see the actual value. Now, that's pretty typical for a KPI. It's going to show whatever the last non-empty value is on your value here or on your data set. All right, so we've gotten here a, a decent start. What I'd also like to do is bring in the budget. So let's bring in the budget next, okay, so we can compare our actual to budget. And then lastly, let's also bring in the prior year actual so we can compare that as well. So you can see it looks like we probably created our budget off of the prior year sales because there seems to be a pretty close tie in between the prior year sales or the prior year actuals 
and the budget that was created. So the budget was likely created off of the prior year actuals. All right, so now that we got this, we got a decent looking chart. We're comparing these three separate values in here. You'll notice that there's several items that have been created, several values and variances that are displaying up top here now. Those variances can be changed and customized. And you can see that underneath there, the KPI indicator value, that is represented by what you see here with this negative 2.5. That is the uh, KPI indicator value. And then the second KPI indicator value is represented by this plus 7.86. Now you can certainly change those to be other values, but it's gonna to default to the variances that it finds between the values in your screen here now. So you can actually come in here and you can see if you highlight above the very last value, the December 1st, 2016 value, you'll see that there is the first variance between the actual and the budget and the second variance between the other numbers indicated here as well. Now you can certainly change some of this if you'd like to. And I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a few moments. But just note that if you had your own variances that you want to bring in here, say, for example, I didn't want to show this variance here. I wanted to show a different variance. You could bring in the prior year variance and drop that underneath the KPI value. And you'll notice that it now changes to be a different variance based on the values I had in my data set already. Again, you can change the secondary uh, data set or the secondary KPI indicator here as well. If I come and grab my other variance, and you'll see this variance is actually based off the same value that we had over here a moment ago. We're seeing the negative 2.5 show up here. So these variances that were there by default were just ones that were placed there based on the variances that it calculated for us. Okay, but again, you can replace those based on the KPI indicator values here. You also have this KPI indicator index, and this is basically what you'll use to be able to determine what indicator or what icon to show next to your variance. So for example, I have an indicator column here. If I drop, drag and drop this indicator column into the KPI indicator index, you'll notice that it brings in a circle that circle can be adjusted based on what you prefer inside the format paintbrush. So I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment. But just so you know what the data looks like behind that, if I go to the data section here, you'll see the indicator is a one, a two, or a three. You can actually go up higher numbers than that. But we're going to basically map what we want those numbers to be to different indicators inside of the visual. All right, so by default, it's coming in as a circle, but we can adjust that. We can change the color of it. We have some uh, sections in here in a few moments here that we can use to adjust that. All right, so if we go over to the Format Paintbrush, we're going to spend a lot of time here under the Format Paintbrush. Under the Format Paintbrush section here, you'll see there's a layout. The layout really has to do with the scaling of this visual. So as you tend to, to, to change the size of here, you'll notice that it's doing some auto scaling for us, some auto adjusting, even until we get all the way down to the, the smallest unit here. You can see it's automatically adjusting the way these look for us, and it does a pretty good job of this. Uh, and that's all done by this section that's turned on by default right now, this layout section where it has auto scaling turned on and auto layout turned on. If you turn that off, you can actually come underneath here and you can change where you want the scaling to occur and where do you want this legend to occur up top. So you can do things like maybe I want it to appear on the bottom, the labels to all appear on the bottom. And because it's no longer on auto, as you start to resize this, you'll notice that it stays on the bottom no matter what. Now we still have the auto scaling turned on, so you'll notice as we go really, really small here, it does. Uh, actually, because of the scaling, it gets rid of those. But the auto layout is uh, hard coding or determining where that uh, legend section and the labels are always going to be. Okay, so that's what the layout section is. I'm going to go ahead and turn that back on. Underneath the title, the title is what you see right here, where it says actual budget, prior year actuals, and indica indic indicator by date. You can adjust what that says right here. You can turn it off if you want. So I can turn it off altogether if I wanted to. But you can also have a subtitle. So you'll see the subtitle and the title section here are pretty much identical as far as what the properties are. I just turned that one off though. If I wanted to, I could have a subtitle underneath that. So maybe I wanted to add a subtitle here, something like budget versus actual. And then in my budget versus actual, what I could do is I can bump up the text size of that some, maybe bump that up to about 20, center that a little bit. And so we have a nice title there. Really, it's a subtitle. You would typically have a title before a subtitle, but just want to show you what the difference is there. This would basically, the subtitle would appear below the title if we had one. All right, so let's move along. The KPI indicator, if we go down to the KPI indicator section here, here's where you can actually map out what those different ones, zeros, and three were that I had in my data set. If I go back to my data set, you'll see a one, a two, and a three. I think I said zero earlier. I actually meant one, two, and three. Here's where I can map out what those numbers align to. So right now, KPI one is aligned to a zero. So we're seeing a zero here. Uh, because any number that it was one is going to show up as a circle. So if I wanted to, I could change this from a circle, say to example, for maybe a triangle, and you can see that indicator should change here. And you can also do things like change the color if I wanted to. So I could change the color here from uh, perhaps maybe a red, and you can see that light up in red here. You can also do anything else in here. Say, for example, I'd like to change it to something more like a, 
arrow right down. You can kind of change. See, this is actually kind of indicating a trend up, even though I have, have a negative number, so that one may not make sense here. So let's ch change that back to something like a flag. So that's a kind of a red warning here, red flag indicating that's not good. Something's not happening good here. We can also change things like um, if we wanted to make the uh, number, any of the values that show up as a 2 in our index column to show up as maybe a diamond, we can change that. And maybe uh, the, the, the number 2 is kind of a yellow. That's our in-between value. And maybe an indicator number 3 can be something per kind of positive, maybe a check mark or something like that. So you can actually come in here and change these. You can see you have up to number 5 that you can work with. So I might do something like an arrow up, maybe a carrot up, really anything that you want here you can kind of adjust and, and modify. I'm going to make this a check mark and make it green. So anytime we have a value that comes through in this manner, it's going to be a green check mark. So I have red for one, yellow for two, green for number three. So again, all this KPI indicator relates back into our data set where I had this indicator value. It's really a calculation that are based off the variance here. So you can really kind of work with that however you want to show that displayed. All right, next one here that we have is the, oh, let me select that again. Next one we have here is the indicator value. So the KPI indicator value, this is basically where you can actually adjust things like the size of the, the text that you see here. So you'll notice that you have, this is actually only impacting the, the first KPI value. There's also a second uh, indicator value here where you can adjust the secondary value that you have here. So let's do this. Let's change a few of the things here. Let's make this show up in a little bit larger font, maybe something like a uh, 16 point font. Uh, you can change the decimal places here if you wanted to show in one decimal places and as opposed to two, you can adjust that. If you didn't want any decimal places, you can also select that here where it's going to round up to three. I'm going to leave it at two decimal places, but just want to show you how you can make some modifications there. You can also italicize it if you want, it, want to here. You can make it bold. You can also have it match the formatting of other values if you wanted to. That's what that bottom option does. And then if we wanted to, we can actually adjust the labels. Right now, there is no label below this, but if we turn on the KPI indicator label, it'll show right below after we provide some text. So we can provide some text here that shows something like a budget versus actual, and we're adding a little bit of text right below that indicator. You can see here, we can probably and might want to increase the text size of that a little bit at least. There we go. And you can do things like change the font color of that, change whether you want it bold or italicized as well. Next, you have where you can actually adjust the secondary indicator here. So the secondary indica indicator we may want to adjust as well, where we can increase the text size of that, just like we did the previous one. We, so we can bump that up to 16-point font, just like we did the previous one. And you can also do, just like we did in the last one, you can change the label. If you wanted to add a label to that, you could. All right, coming down a little bit more, we see the in in KPI value, or so, sorry, the KPI actual value as you expand that. So this is the actual value that we're looking at right here. You may want to bump up the text size of that as well. So bump that up to something like 16 point font. Uh, you can change the, the formatting on this if you wanted to. So you can change this to some, something like show in thousands if you wanted to. You can uh, make it auto like it was initially. You can really kind of adjust it if you, however you see fit. I'm going to put it on none. Uh, if I wanted a comma separator here, by the way, and a dollar sign, that's all done as more of a modeling formatting piece, not so much in the visual itself. All right, work our way a little bit further down. You can change the label here. So if I wanted to increase the label text size, I can bump that up a little bit. So maybe bump that up to be something kind of equivalent to what we see over here. Okay, let me actually see what I have over there and match it to that. So my KPI label here is 13 point font. So let's make this one 13 point font as well. I'll go ahead and type it in. There we go. All right, a little bit further down, you see that is re relative to the date. So if I wanted to bump up the date values here, we can do that underneath this one. So I can bump this up to 16 point font. I can go underneath the date labels and pump, bump this up to 13 point font. But you, basically what you're seeing here is it's very, very customizable. I can adjust things to be specific to what I want to see in each of these different labels that we see up top. We can also adjust the line style and the data colors. And there's all kinds of other stuff we can do here. So let's look at some of these, the data colors. Right now, these are the colors that we're using that are part of the line. So if I wanted to change actual to something other than this typical Power BI green, I could do something like change it to more of a pure green here if I wanted to. I could change the budget. I like actually having budget as black. And then previous year is red is fine as well. But you can come in here and adjust the colors that are used in the lines if you wanted to. Next, the data labels. You can turn on data labels on this if you wanted to. And you can actually adjust the data label frequency if you wanted to. So you'll see here there's a label density where you can lower the density here where the labels show up a fewer amount of times. And they only show up as a little bit less frequently just based on the percentage of the density that you choose here. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn off the labels for this. But just note that you can turn on the labels. You can adjust the formatting just like you could in any of the other properties we saw. All right, a little bit further down, you have line style. So line style here, I can change the actual. Say, for example, I want the actual or budget. I have a budget. 
let's change the line style of the budget to be something like a dashed line. Okay, so that way you can see that's our budget value that we're trying to beat. They're a nice way to be able to adjust the type of lines that you're using. You can see you can do that really in any of these other type of lines as well. You can change how you want to visualize the line style here. All right, a little bit lower, you have the thickness of the line. So I kind of like to adjust this a little bit for those that maybe want to see a little bit of a thicker line. I'll bump this up to about five on each of these. And that would take a little bit easier to actually visualize that here underneath the line thickness. All right, we're on the home stretch here. Underneath the legend section, you'll see you can actually adjust the legend on the bottom. You may want to bump up the text size of the legend a little bit at least. So as I bump up the legend, you can see that indicated here on the bottom. You can also tell it where you want the, the, the position of the legend to be. Right now it's on the bottom center, but you could put it on the right or the left, however you choose to see it. I might do something like put it on the right center or the left center. I like it on the right center. Let's leave it there for now. And then you can have a nice way to be able to visualize that information here. All right, a little bit further down after legend, you see the x-axis and the y-axis. This has to do with the labels that you see here. Underneath the x-axis, you can increase the label size here if you wanted to, which probably makes sense. Bump that up a little bit. And you could also kind of deal with the, the number of tick marks that you see. If you wanted to lower the number of tick marks, for example, you see all these tick marks that are shown vertically and horizontally here. You can change that. You can also change the text color. I'm not too worried about that for this example, but you know, you can, you can do it if you wanted to. The y-axis, hey, I actually might want to lower the density of this one. I'm going to lower the density shown here, and you'll notice it actually lowers the number of labels that we see. I'll bump it up to about 50% roughly. And then uh, let's bump up the text size of that a little bit. You can also change the display unit. So if I wanted to, I can change this to something like none and then see those as more true values here. All right, starting to look pretty good. I like the way this is showing here now. The final couple things you can want, maybe is you want to turn off the reference lines. If you wanted to, you can see the x-axis uh, reference lines are already turned off. If I turn those on, you can see what that would look like. You may want to turn off the y reference lines if you don't really care to see those because you do have these nice tool tips that hover up or show whenever you hover over the values here. Speaking of tooltips, you actually see you can actually adjust and work with the tooltip labels. If I wanted to turn off the tooltip labels, I can hit off. And then now the labels actually would not appear whenever we're using our tooltip. So you'll notice the difference on the top there. On the very top, it says Saturday, October 1st, 2016. Whenever I turn that off, that no longer shows. So if you don't really want to see whatever the date reference line hap happens to be showing, you can turn that off. Probably makes sense to go ahead and keep that on though. All right, next you'll see the, uh, the tooltip KPI value. If you turn that off, that means you'll actually no longer see the, the, the KPI value show up here. The indicator value, that's the last one here that's listed, that no longer shows up whenever you're looking here. That's the last value, the negative 2.5% that you'll notice that no longer shows here, the second variance, or the first variance, really. You can also turn off the second variance as well. So if I turn that off, you'll notice there's no percentage showing here. It's just the actual, the budget, and the prior year values. You have the ability to adjust those here. I'm going to go ahead and leave them on, but just note you can do that. And you can also change the label here if you wanted to. Right now it says variance and variance 2. You can certainly adjust that by going underneath the tooltip indicator value, and you can give it a different label here if you wanted to. Same with the secondary one. Right now it's called variance 2. Whenever you see it here, you can adjust that and make it so that you don't see variance 2. The reason it just says variance here, it doesn't say variance 2, is because it sees that there's two with the same name and it has to show something different. All right, we're on the home stretch here. Last one, the tooltip values. Underneath the tooltip values, this is just having to do with the formatting of the tooltip values. Whenever you hover above this and you see those values as last three, the actual, the budget, and the prior year actuals, is this allows you to actually adjust the formatting of those a little bit. Again, you'll, you'll certainly want to adjust the formatting in the model as well, but this just gives you one place where you can adjust it for the visual as far as the display units and the decimal places that are shown. All right, finally, the last couple things you see here, the background, the locked aspect, the border, and the general, these all have to do with really values that you have in every one of the properties, in every one of the custom visuals or regular visuals. They always have these properties here on the bottom. I'm not really going to go over those in detail because you really have those in every one of the visuals, but just note that's also an option here in the Power KPI. Well, that's really it for this one. It's a pretty nice visual. You can see it actually created a fairly nice looking chart that shows us some of the KPI values here over time. Hope you guys enjoyed this one and look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module.